Okay, so because a variable name is a reference to an object, when you're dealing with lists, something you need to be very careful about is you do not want to modify a list as you are looping through that list because you can easily trap yourself into an infinite loop without noticing. Here on slide 29, I have a list v4 initialized to contain 4, 9, 1, 16. And what I want to do is I want to modify this list so that it contains its original values followed by the square roots of those values. Notice that we're taking each one of the items in v4 and we're raising it to the 0.5 power and we are appending that to the end of the list. Okay, so if I say 4i in v4, all right, we're looping through v4. The first time through, i is going to be a 4. The second time through, i is going to be a 9. The third time, it'll be a 1, and so on. And what I'm saying is v4.append the square root of i. My goal here is to end up with a list of eight values, 2, 3, 1, and 4, the square roots of these original, five, uh, original four values. However, ah, what I actually have here is an infinite loop because I'm modifying v4 as I'm looping through v4, and so when the loop has made it past the 16, the loop discovers that, oh, now there's a 2 there, so it's going to compute the square root of 2. And then there's a 3, so it'll compute the square root of 3. And then there's a 1, so it'll compute the square root of 1. And it's going to keep building this list forever until I run out of uh, memory or Python itself decides to stop running uh, this loop. So I'm going to hit Control C. There we go. All right. So I now have this humongous list v4 with 180.5 180, million entries in it. What we need to do to avoid this is we want to loop on a shallow copy of the list, not on the list itself. And we can use the dot copy method for this purpose. All right, so let me reset v4 to its original four values, 4, 9, 1, 16. All right, so now v4 is a reference to a list of just the original four values, 4, 9, 1, 16. And if I say 4i in v4.copy, v4.copy will make a copy of that list as a separate object. And I can now successfully append into v4 itself the square roots of the values from the copy of v4. And this works fine. And now I have what I originally wanted. 49116 is the first four items. And then the square roots of these. Now, because I've taken an integer to a floating point power, these come out as floating point values, uh, 2.0, 3.0, etc. OK. So, We've looked at lists. We've looked at the named member functions that you can use with lists. The next thing we're going to take a look at are what are called slices of sequences. And recall that a list is one example of a sequence. A range is also a sequence. A string is also a sequence. The idea is if we have some sequence object and we want to get some subpart of that sequence, we can use square bracket notation. Let me create this list v. v is 4, 3, 2, 9, 8, 7. 
I just cannot seem to remember that last comma. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we've got it. And if I give the name of a sequence object in a square bracket, I can now specify the initial item index that I want as a sequence, a subsequence from this, in this case, this list V, and a colon, and then the end value. Now, as with the range function, where if you were to say something like range 5, that gives you an iterable from 0 to 4. Slices work the same way. So if I say sequence 0 colon 5, that actually means from 0 up to 4, that is up to 1 less than 5. All right, so if I say 1 colon 4, that's going to give me a slice of v starting from index 1 up to but not including index 4. So I'll get index 1, 2, 3, but I will not get the value at index sub 4. So what I should get from this is a copy of that subsequence from within V. And since V is a list, this will also be a list. All right, so there we are. So I have a list 329. It turns out that if I don't specify an initial index for my slice, 0 is used by default. So if I were to say v of colon 3, this is equivalent to v of 0 colon 3. And I'm going to get 0, 1, and 2. So I'll get the 4, 3, 2 part of that list, a copy of it. Similarly, if I don't have a value after the colon, then by default, the length of the sequence is used. Now, remember, the length of the sequence is an invalid index, actually. In this case, the length of the sequence is 6. And if I were to ask for v sub 6, that would be an error. But when I'm talking about a slice, since we don't actually go up to the final index, uh, it's fine. If I say v sub 4 colon, uh, this is equivalent to v sub 4 colon 6. And what that actually means is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, so starting from sub 4, which is the 8, up to the sub 5, which is the 7, but not including sub 6 which would be an error. All right, and so there we have the 8-7 slice of that list. Now I'm going to type in a different value for v here, and I won't make you watch this. OK, so I've got my new value for the list v typed in. Remember that plus for lists is concatenation. So if I wanted to create a list that is a concatenation of a couple of slices of some list, that's easy to do. Here I'm saying v2 gets v sub 4 colon. That means v sub 4, which is the 13, up to and including the n. So that's going to give me a slice 13 minus 1, 0. And I'm going to concatenate v sub 1 colon 4, which means from 1 up to but not including 4. So that is going to give me the 237 part. And so what I should get is 13 minus 1, 0, followed by 237 as a list. And that is what I get. Now, it turns out that for any integer that you pick, regardless of what that integer is. And for any sequence, whether it's a list or a string or a tuple, the sequence up to but not including n concatenated with the sequence from n to the end is always going to be the same as the original sequence. All right, so here's v. And if I pick any value of n, if I say v sub colon 4, 
plus V sub 4 colon. That's going to give me back a copy of the original V. Now, bizarrely, these indexes don't even have to be valid indexes. If I say V sub 10, I get an error, of course. But when you create a slice using an index, even if the index is out of bounds, the slice will still make sense. So if I, st if I say v sub colon 10 plus v sub 10 colon, this looks like this should just be an error. But what it means is, give me the slice of v up to but not including element sub 10. Well, there's only seven elements in here, sub, sub 0 up through sub 6. So I'm going to get the sub 0 up through sub 6 for this first part. And then v sub 10 colon says, give me all of the items in the slice from 10 up through the end. Well, 10 up through the end is empty. So in effect, what this is, is the original v plus, that is concatenated with, an empty list. And so I get back the original list. All right, so v sub colon 10 is actually v and v sub 10 colon is an empty list and so what i've done is i've concatenated the original v with an empty list and gotten back a copy of my original list all right if you use a single integer subscript that will give you a single item as we know so if i say uh <laughs> And here, for some reason, I'm changing v again. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this. This is silly. All right, so here's v. And if I say v sub 0, of course, that gives me the sub 0 item. If I say v sub minus 1, well, that gives me the last item, as I hope you recall. So that will be the 0 at the end. And if I say v sub 9, <clears throat> this is going to be an error. But as I've just demonstrated, Whenever you ask for a slice, that is going to work even if one or both of the indexes that you give for the slice are out of range. All right, so here I have v, and if I say v colon from 0 up to but not including 1, well, that is a list of just one item. It, it starts from item sub 0 and goes up to, but not including, item sub 1. So I end up with a list of one item. If I say v sub uh, minus 3 colon minus 1, now this may, at first, when you glance at that, look incorrect. But recall that v sub minus 3 is the third item from the end, and v sub minus 1 is the last item at the end. But in a slice, we mean up to but not including that end index. So this is going to give me the items from sub minus 3 up to but not including sub minus 1. And this will give me the 13 and the minus 1. And as I showed, you can use a, an index that's crazy. If I say v sub colon 123, I get the original v. Now, if I say v sub colon, this is valid. And what it means is give me all the items from v, that is, give me a slice consisting of all the items from v from item sub 0 up to but not including item sub length of v, which in this case is 7. So from item 0 up to but not including item sub 7. That is yet another way of getting a copy of a list. Okay, A slice of a list is a copy of a portion of the list. And so if you say v sub colon, that means give me a copy of the entire list. OK, and then here we have a couple of examples that I've sh or one example that I've already shown. Um, <clears throat> if both of the indexes are, are out of range, you just get an empty list. In fact, even if the indexes are in a bogus order, if I ask for uh, starting from 5 up to but not including 1, well, 5 up to but not including 1 doesn't even make sense, and yet I get an empty list 
from that. Okay, so as an alternative to making a copy by using the dot copy method, I can use the subcolon slice notation as an alternate way of getting a copy. And you'll you'll see code written in both of these ways depending on the knowledge level and stylistic preference of whoever is writing the code. So, I've claimed that the dot copy method and also the slice notation. I, I may actually not have remembered to say this about slices, but both the dot copy method and slices are what are called shallow copies. And we need to be clear about what a shallow copy is. Now, even though it looks to us like we have values in this list, v1 here is 5, let me put this together, v1 is gets 5, 3.14. It's possible, it's perfectly fine to have a list <clears throat> as an item within a list, just as you could have a string as an item within a list. So this list v1 contains four items, 5, 3.14, this list currently containing 987 and the value true. But actually what's stored in this list are references to these objects which are at certain locations in memory. Okay, so V1 does not directly contain 5. What it contains is a reference to where the 5 is in memory. Likewise, it does not directly contain 3.14 it contains a reference to where 3.14 is in memory. Similarly, it contains a reference to where this list is located in memory. That list itself does not actually contain 9, 8, and 7. It contains a reference to a 9, a reference to an 8, and a reference to a 7. All right, so this may all seem uh, a little bit crazy here. But internally, that's what's actually going on in memory. Now, if I say v2 gets v1, since variables are references, v2 is simply an alternate reference to the same list that v1 is a reference to. And if I look at v2, I'll see that it certainly appears to be equal to v1. And if I use the is comparison, I see that v2 is v1. Now, let's take a look at what's going on here in memory. Okay, so what's going on in memory is I created a list and I set up v1 as the reference to that list. So v1 is a reference to a list of four items, but what that list actually contains is references to those four items. So we have a reference to 5, a reference to... <laughs> now, <laughs> this is a typo, obviously. This should be 3.14 rather than 2.7. Um, and we have a reference to a list which in turn contains these three references to 9, 8, and 7. And finally, a reference to true. When I then say v2 gets v1, that creates v2 as a reference to the same list that v1 is a reference to. Now, when I say here uh, at the top of uh, you know the first statement here in, in slide 38, I'm just redisplaying v1 so that we can see what it is. And of course, I still have my typo here, but we'll ignore that. When I say v3 gets v1.copy, this is making a shallow copy of v1. What we mean by a shallow copy is a copy of all those references. So when I say v3 gets v1.copy, what I'm getting is a copy of just these references. Okay, I'm not getting a copy of the 5, a copy of the, well, that should be 3.14. I'm just getting a copy of these references. So what that's going to look like is this. So 
when I say v3 gets v1.copy, that makes a copy of these references. And v3 now is a reference to that list of references. And all right, so the, the first item in v3 is a reference to the 5. The second item is a reference to the 3.14. The third item in v sub 3, that is the sub 2 item, is a reference to this list, which in turn is references to 987. OK, so specifically, not only did I not get a copy of the 5, the 3.14, and the true, but I also did not get a copy of the 9, the 8, and the 7. I only got a copy of those references. Now, it is going to be the case that v3 sub 2 is the same object as v1 sub 2. All right, so v1 sub 2 is this reference which is this list. And v3 sub 2 is this reference, which is referring to the same list. So if I switch back to my shell, and I ask whether, well, I better do my copy first, right? I better say v3 gets v1.copy. When I say v3, when I test whether v3 sub 2 is v1 sub 2, I get told, yes, that's true. Now, here's the dangerous thing. If I remove 5 from v1, now v1 no longer contains the 5. But v3 still does contain the 5. What's happening in memory is this. v1 has been modified. Its first item has been removed. And so v1 no longer has a reference to the 5. v1 now just has a reference to the 3.14 and to the list 987 and to the value true. But that did not modify v3 because v3 was a shallow copy of the original v1. So v3 still has its reference to 5. If I then append high to v3, well, that's going to add another reference to the end of this, now this list of five references. And that's going to be a reference to the string high. All right, so the upshot is I was able to remove an item from v1 and append an item to v3. And those modifications were independent of one another because of the shallow copy. But if I say v3 sub 2 sub 1 gets a minus 1, all right, v3 sub 2 is this reference, sub 2 sub 1 is this reference, and I'm changing that to a minus 1. Now what that means is that the reference to the 8 is replaced with a reference to a minus 1, and in memory here's what's happening. Okay, the 8 no longer has a reference to it, and so it can be reclaimed from memory. Uh, perhaps, perhaps it does still have a reference to it somewhere. And I have modified this list to contain a reference to the value minus 1, which is stored someplace in memory. Now, because v1 still contains a reference to that list, I will see that change reflected in v1. The reason being that v3 was only a shallow copy of v1 not a so-called deep copy of v1. That is, v3 does not have its own separate list referring to a separate 987. It only has a reference to the same list that v1 still contains a reference to. So if I make that change, well, let me first add 
pi to the end of v3. All right, so v1 no longer has the 5. v3 still has the 5 and also has high. But if I say v3 sub 2 sub 1 gets minus 1, not only has that changed v3, but it's also apparently changed v1. All right. I no longer have an 8 as the middle item in the sub 1 item of v1. I have a minus 1 instead of the 8. OK, so both the dot copy method and the sub colon slice are shallow copies of the list, not deep copies making copies of all of the subcomponents of the list. OK, let me get back to a list that does not have lists as subcomponents. Here's v. We know that we can change a particular item in v using an ordinary subscript. v sub 3, let's say, gets uh, 123. And so what used to be 7 in the sub 3 slot is now 123. It turns out that we can also change an entire slice of a list to the values from some iterable. Let me reset v here to the simple example on slide 41. 0, 1, 2, 5, 4. OK. If I look at v, I see that it has these five items in it. If I look at v sub 1 colon 3, that is a shallow copy of the items starting from sub 1 uh, up to, but not including, item sub 2, uh, sub 3, pardon me. So that is the 1, 2 slice. But it turns out that on the left side of an assignment operation, rather than being a copy of that part of the list, the v sub 1 colon 3 actually acts as a reference to that slice. So if I say v sub 1 colon 3 gets some other list, I have now replaced the slice that used to contain 1, 2 with 9876. Okay? So my list has grown from five items to seven items. And the slice that started out containing the values 1 and 2 has been replaced by the values 9876. If you want to get rid of a slice, you want to get rid of all of the values within a slice, you can say v sub slice gets an empty list. That has the effect of deleting all of those uh, values in that slice. So v sub 1 up to but not including 5 would be the 9876 part. And I'm replacing all of that with an empty list. So now I just am back to the three elements, 0, 3, 4. A list is iterable. We've seen that we can step through the items in a list using a for loop, for example. But there are other iterables that we know about as well, like range or strings. If I say v sub length of v colon. Now, the length of v is an item that's beyond the end of the list. But if I use that in a slice, effectively what I'm doing is getting myself a reference to where the end of that list is. And if I say, all right, let's assign to that empty sublist at the end the values from the iterable range 5, what that does is to append the values from the iterable range 5 at the end of my list. I can use the same kind of trick to insert the values from some iterable into the middle of my list. So if I say v sub 1 colon 1 get something, 
let's think about what v colon one v sub one colon one means. Uh, v sub one would be the three, and what I'm saying is I want to replace everything in the slice from item sub one up to but not including item sub one. Now, in effect, you can think of that as being like a, a pointer or a reference just ahead of that value in the sub one slot. And a string is an iterable. Recall that when I use a string as an iterable, it's going to be split up into one character wide substrings. The upshot is that I have now got these three one character strings inserted ahead of the three, what used to be the item sub one. OK, so that's pretty cool. That gives you a lot of flexibility about inserting and deleting subparts of lists anywhere that you can specify a slice.